We're going to focus in on the volatility in bond markets right now. Andy Brenner, who is head of international fixed income at National Alliance in New York, is joining us. Andy, great to see you. It's uh, the, some of the equity markets are getting thumped out of the, the spillover effect. Go through what is at stake in the bond market right now. Is it just that sales of new debt are about to come on board? No, that really isn't it at all. I mean, that is what people are saying. But what you have here is the illiquidity of what's been going on, what's been building over the last two years, is finally coming to fruition. And as, as people go to sell bonds, there are no bids, or the bids are much thinner, and, and markets are gapping downward. This is the second kind of flash crash you've had at 5 to 7 in the morning in the last week, last Thursday being the other time. You know, uh, when I woke up this morning, blunts were down a point. Ten years were at 235, 236 yield. I mean, they, they broke in to all new high yields uh, for the year, at least in the U.S. Treasury market. So you've got the illiquidity. You've got a lot of speculative positions in Europe that were hoping that the ECB would take them out at much higher levels, and they're being forced to sell. And then you have momentum players that are, you know, just get on board when they see a, a trend developing, and they've been pushing bond markets lower. And then finally, and no one's really talking about this per se, is I think the, the bill in the uh, U.S. Congress that's going to curtail what the Fed can and can't do uh, probably is having a negative effect as well. So you've got those four things, crushing bonds, and that's, that's leaking over into stocks, and you're seeing stock markets across the world, actually stock markets in Europe and the U.S., really getting hit pretty hard. So that, that's the way I see it. But, but no, no single event or trigger for today's crushing, as you say, of the bond market? No, this is the second time. This is the third time you've been down to the 228, 230 level in 10 years. And we have an old adage in technical analysis, third time down, you break and you have broken this time. You know, we tend to think that 10 years now can get to, you know, 240-ish, and what have you. I mean, the fundamentals are still unchanged. You know, the U.S. economy is okay, nothing to write home about. The European economies are, are turning around. But, you know, it's, this is all about flows and lack of liquidity. It sort of seemed a bit like Europe has been, uh, the European bond trends have been affecting the U.S. ones. And as you say, there's lots of sort of reasons. But that is a bit of a, a tail wagging the dog scenario, isn't it? No question about it. What you have here is, you know, everyone just felt that with the ECB coming in, and now the ECB is actually increasing the amount of bonds they're buying, they felt that all the interest rates would go negative, including the German 10-year. Now you've gone from something on the order of three and a half trillion bonds that were negative yield, now down to probably a little over a trillion. So, I mean, we're, that's still pretty unusual to have negative yields anywhere. Uh, it's people that have played this trend have gotten beat up and beat up pretty hard. This has nothing to do with the dollar. This has nothing to do with oil. This is, you know, it all is just bad flows and illiquidity. A lot of people watching the UK now. We may be a couple of years away from a vote on the, the UK's uh, continued participation in the EU. Uh, what do you think of the possibility of a so-called Brexit? Well, you know, I mentioned that yesterday, and most people didn't understand what I was talking about. But yes, I do think that's, uh, that's a problem. But that's only a problem if Greece exits. If Greece stays and there's no precedent for exiting, then, then I think no matter what the, the Brits decide, they're going to be forced to stay. But if Greece, set, if Greece sets the trend, which I don't think they will, and they do exit the euro, then yeah, I would say a British exit is, is, uh, is a very high probability. Let's say a lot of people seem to think that uh, we'll take this right down to the wire with Greece, as, as we have with this story, it seems, for the last half decade or so. Eventually, the bills get paid. Um, you know, what does it do to bonds in the meantime? What, do, they, do they come out of this eventually stronger? What, how do you see things working once we get past some of the Greek summer tragedy? Well, the more interesting thing is the fact that all the headlines of Greece, and Greece still dominates the headlines, it really doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in the rest of Europe right now. With all the negative headlines in Greece, you would think there's a flight to quality, and if anything, it's just the opposite. So as far as will it make Greece stronger, better, so on and so forth, yeah, I mean, eventually I think Greece will, will, will start to run a, a normal market-oriented economy, but, you know, there, right now there are a lot of, you know, socialists, leftists, whatever, that are running the government, and, you know, it's going to take some time. 
However, I think the, the, we are seeing a big change with Verifucus there out of the negotiations. Uh, his arrogance is no longer plaguing the negotiations. And I think we'll actually come to some kind of agreement. As you mentioned, Greece today did pay the $750 million that they owed the IMF. I mean, they had to scrape it together. And that's probably going to be how it, that's probably going to be the trend all summer long. But I think Greece muddles through it. Yeah, empty cupboards, but they muddle through. That seems to be the general sentiment. Andy, terrific to speak to you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. That's Andy Brenner of the National Alliance. He joined us from New York this morning.